your girl is back with another monthly TBR. This one obviously is June's. It's very ambitious. There are, I do, a degree that involves advanced statistics and I could not think of what number this is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven books. I thought this was ambitious, but seven is pretty doable. Is it whenever you're actually starting to write your thesis? I don't care, I'm gonna read these, so let's talk about them. I have been so lucky that the majority of books this month have been proofs gifted to me, which is insane, so <laughs> six of seven are proofs. So let's first talk about the little one dude that isn't a proof, and that is Death and Croissants. I saw this one in Waterstones, my mum and I both did actually, and we're very intrigued. I mean, look at that cover. It's cute, and death, and croissants. I love a croissant. Not so much death. Um, it's giving me very big Thursday Murder Club vibes. Richard is a middle-aged Englishman who runs a B and B in the Val Val de Foyer. Foyer. I can't do French. I always do the like foyer, you know, because I did French and Spanish, so then I'm like double L makes a Y, but then that's a different language. So it's foyer. Nothing ever happens to Richard and that's the way he likes it. However, one of his older guests disappears, the only trace being a bloody handprint left on the wallpaper. Another guest persuades a reluctant Richard to join her in investigating the disappearance. Cute, wholesome murder, which the Thursday Murder Club did and did so well. I'm so invested in the Thursday Murder Club. Very excited for the new one to come out in September. But this seems similar at France. It's a vibe. I actually book swapped this with my friend Chloe on Instagram, which was really nice and really exciting. But I have to read this soon because my mum wants to steal it off me and I go home tomorrow. So I better get reading this on the plane so it can be stolen by my beloved mother. <laughs> Next up we have like the most stunning thing ever and that is the Cherry Robbers. Look at that. And also hardbacks. I've been so fed up that every hardback I have been buying recently has just been a boring black whenever you take the cover off. She's pink <laughs> and she is beautiful. The Cherry Robbers comes out on June 2nd so it will already be out by the time you see this video and I'm planning on reading it as soon as possible but okay the back says once the tragedies begin to happen one after another the children in the village made up a rhyme about us. The Chapel sisters first they get married then they get buried. So I've heard this compared to Shirley Jackson and it's a really good mystery kind of thing. That like marriage equals death for these chapel sisters. Uh, okay, a riveting, deliciously twisted feminist tale about the legacy of male power and the cost of female freedom. Overthrow the patriarchy, baby, please. But I, it's stunning, it's beautiful. I've only heard good reviews and I'm so excited to dive into this one. Both this one and Death and Croissants, I feel are gonna be such speedy reads because I'm so invested in them already. But I love it. We've been speaking about the patriarchy and like male power and this book revolves around the male gaze and that is watching women and girls. Once again, this cover, sorry stunning. Um, with proofs it's always so funny because I look at the back and it's just reviews and I know nothing to start telling you. But this debut collection m movingly explores, and I tried to say exploringly moves, this debut collection movingly explores how women and girls are looked at, look at one another and look at themselves, how living as an object can shape their passions, fears and joys. With a clear eye and dark humour, Danielle Pender considers sex, parenting, grief and class as lenses for the ways in which the world watches women and how women are watching back. Yes, I love short story collections a lot. They're some of my favourite actually. They're very easy to do bad. I pick up a lot of short story collections and I either absolutely love or don't really like. So, very, very high hopes for this one once again. I have been awful at reading at the moment, so people have already been posting reviews of this one. Stellar reviews. I'm very excited to dive in. I have a funny feeling this is going to be short stories done well. Do you know what? I told a lie. I have another book in here that isn't a proof, but 
these three books all have a common theme. So we have Before My Actual Heart Breaks by Tish Delaney. This matches my top. We're both blue. I love that. Before My Actual Heart Breaks. Then I have a proof, back in the proofs, of Tish Delaney's next novel, The Saint of Lost Things. And I have an advanced paperback copy of The Troubles With Us. So it's a very Northern Irish collection of books for these three. But okay, I will start with the Tish Delaney's. So I've talked about this one before. Both this one and this one, I think, are kind of 90s Northern Ireland. It's obviously, as a country, we collectively have a weird identity and especially in the 90s following the Troubles and the peace process. Identity was fraught, honestly. I mean, is it any better today? Debatable. So this one is about someone who went and moved to London, I think, and then moved back to Northern Ireland. So they're kind of coming to terms with that, I think. Will Lindy grasp who she is again? I'm excited to see if she grasps who she is again. This one is about, you know, like a young Northern Irish girl who has had a lot of big dreams for herself and has grown up to live a little bit of an average life, as far as I know, and kind of dealing with that. Northern Irish stuff as well. I'm very excited to read these. People rave about them and as a Northern Irish girl myself I think they're gonna have a special place in my heart, you know? Like no one no one knows Northern Ireland like the Northern Irish until Shillini is from somewhere in Northern Ireland. Is it from Mana or in a skillin? It does not say but she's from somewhere in Northern Ireland so her storytelling about these people and these stories I am very very much into and I think it might make me cry. So this is a fantastic month to be reading these as I am flying home to Belfast tomorrow. The third Northern Irish one as I mentioned is The Troubles With Us. I kind of love this cover. The hardback had a very cartoony cover but I quite like the actual person with a pink of course. Beautiful pink spine. From burnt out buses blocking the route to school to the police mistaking Alex O'Neill's father for a leading terrorist, life on the Falls Road in 1990s Belfast is never dull. And that's before you even discuss the things that actually concern, concern a teenage Alex and her friends, namely booze, boys and boyzone. Warm, embarrassing and full of trouble and insight, The Troubles With Us is a hilarious and moving account of the madness and mundanities of life in Northern Ireland during the 30 year conflict. I have heard this described as like Dairy Girls in a book and I talk about Dairy Girls all the time and also you can 100% stereotype me into Northern Irish girl that loves Dairy Girls because it's completely 100% true. That show is the best thing, like it is one of the best things that has ever happened to me, like watching that I howl, I cry with laughter, I cry with actual tears, I don't know if any of you are fans and watched the last season, man I was away with it like tissues at the ready but it's incredible fantastic storytelling i love it so much so a book in its form and as i said it's just finished there will never be more dairy girls again so this book is going to fill that hole in my heart this one unlike the other two is non-fiction um so it's like a memoir of you know being a teenage girl in one of I mean, it literally is a war zone, you know, the 30 year conflict of being completely normal in a place that 100% isn't. So I'm so excited to read this. Let's see, I want to read like the first page. Oh my God, she's done a map. <laughs> we have Belfast Lock, East Belfast, My Belfast, Shankill Road, St. Catherine, St. Dominic's, Falls Road motorway, <laughs> Lisburn Road, Malone Road. Oh, that's my university building where I did all my site classes. It's approximately there. Segways into the both of them. The Crez. <laughs> There's a wee fish. Do you think that's a chippy? Where is it? Do you think? Is that meant to be like the local chippy? I'm obsessed already. Okay, we have one from cute and wholesome Northern Ireland slice of home kind of vibe to potentially the most unhinged book on my shelf, La Bavana. I am so excited to read her. I mean, those ones are like a slice of home. This is literally written in a medieval fiefdom. Um, let's, read, let's read the blurb together. 
In a village in a medieval fiefdom, buffeted by natural disasters, a motherless shepherd boy finds himself the unlikely pivot in a power struggle that puts all manner of faith to a savage test. In a spellbinding novel that represents Otessa Moshfei's most exciting leap yet. I am actually seeing Otessa Moshfei in August, which is insane to me. Why on earth this very famous author is coming to St Andrews? I don't know, but she is, and I bought tickets at the earliest opportunity. So not only do I have to read this before then, I have to read the entire rest of her work. So this will be my third Moshfei. I've read Eileen and My Year of Rest and Relaxation. So I'm gonna have to read Homesick for Another World and Death in Her Hands and also McGlue, McGlue, my Northern Irish accents aren't so weird. Um, it's a short story, I think. I don't know if I can get my hands on it in the UK, but I'm gonna try. I have heard nothing lower than a four star for this book. Everyone is like completely unhinged. Like it's fucking bonkers, apparently. Um, I'm trying to see, I also love that <laughs> The like little quote, I don't know the literary term of what that's called, is from Demi Lovato. I feel stupid when I pray. So that's gonna get stuck in my head when reading this book. Okay, do you know what? I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, but I think Penguin, I think Penguin will allow me to read the first sentence, right? I'll leave this video on that. The bandits came again on Easter. This time they slaughtered two men, three women, and two small children. Some smelting tools were stolen from the blacksmith, but no gold or silver, as there was none. Stop it, because I wasn't planning on bringing this home with me. I was leaving this for whenever I came back. But I feel like I need to read it. Immediately! I only have a tiny backpack to travel with. I'm, I'm having a crisis here. Will I bring her? Will I not? I feel I'm gonna leave her and I feel when I come back I will do a whole dedicated reading vlog to Miss Moshfei. So, ooh, <laughs> we have the books. Thank you so much for being here, for watching this complete rambles of these books. I don't think any of my videos are overly coherent but I hope you enjoy that anyway <laughs> and it's part of the fun and why you stick around. I hope. Or if you're new here, I hope you do stick around. So have a great week, let me know what you're reading and I will see you next week with some more bookish content.